Hey, how's it going? Welcome to Rapid Fire Reaper Tutorials, all info, no fluff. And today we're talking track-based hotkeys. As always, I'm gonna go through Reaper's default hotkeys first, and then we'll jump into my custom Reaper and show you some of the stuff that I added. And the defaults won't take too long this time because a lot of actions exist for tracks, but not a lot of them have a hotkey bound to them by default. The track controls are pretty intuitive to use. Click on any track to mute it or solo it, select a bunch of tracks and I can mute them, I can solo them, I can record arm them, what have you. But I'll show you why I added mine. There will be a list of all the actions and the hotkeys in the end so you can screenshot that or you can find it in the blog. So don't worry about taking notes as I go because I go pretty fast. So strap in. By default if you hit command and T you can insert a new track. You can also double click to add a new track. Command option and up and down to move between tracks and then if you add shift to that you'll be adding those tracks to your selection. Also on any track if you hit V you will open its volume envelope and if you hit P you will open its pan envelope and you can close them like that as well. Finally, command and down will nudge the track volume down and command and up will nudge the track volume up. But again, I can just move this knob or fader or I can hold command to fine tune it. And that's basically all for default Reaper stuff. Let's jump into my Reaper and see what has changed. Well, the first reason I wanted to add a bunch of track based hotkeys to my Reaper, by default, if I want to see all the controls on my tracks, I have to make them quite big. This is quite a significant portion of my screen. Because I have a bunch of hotkeys, I can just make these smaller and really just see the track name and fader and I'm good to do all the other operations from there. And just for now, let's make these bigger so that you can see all the stuff I'm doing. So with one track or a bunch of tracks selected, I can do shift M to mute and unmute, shift S to solo and unsolo. I can do shift R to record arm. I can do shift A and that basically does what this action does, automatic record arm when track selected. With shift and I, I can cycle through monitoring modes. If I want to hide any track, I can do shift and A H and that hides the track and if I want to get it back I do command shift and M to open the track manager and the track that we hit is this one and hit it. Finally I have this nice custom action called archive tracks so let's say I want to take this track out of my project but only temporarily have a way of getting it back. I can first hit shift M to mute the track and then I can hit shift D and that will archive the track. I stole this from the SWS manual so it mutes all sends, it mutes all receives, sets all effects offline for selected tracks and then it hides them from from MCP and TCP and then it unselects them. Now you may be wondering why the hell would I do something like that? And the reason for that is simple. So if you don't know, there is this option called do not process muted tracks. So if you just mute a track, it will not affect your CPU usage at all. When you mute them, okay, they don't take CPU time, but still those plugins will be loaded when you load your project and that will make the loading take longer. So if you have a bunch of tracks that are hidden and muted on your project, great. They don't take CPU time if you have that preference ticked, but they still do affect your loading time. Now, if I want to bring the track that I archive back, I can just show it here and I can, you know, unmute it when I want to. And I have this unarchive tracks custom action that basically reverses all the stuff we did earlier. I don't have a hotkey for that because I don't use it quite often. These next two commands don't work for multiple tracks, but they work for one track. So with any one track selected, I can do option and I to open its IO routing, escape to get out of that. And I can do option and F to open its effects window. And for any selected track, I can hold command control option and then I have F1 to F7 set to float that track's effects. And then the same keys will get rid of it. So I like that they're next to each other because I can just drag my fingers across like this and I'll get all of them drag my fingers again and they're gone. Speaking of plugins, I can also do option shift and F to bypass and unbypass effects on selected tracks. I can do command option and left to hard pan left a selected track or a bunch of selected tracks and then right. Obviously I can double click to center all of them so I don't have a hotkey for that. And then I have control command option and left to pan tracks symmetrically. So what this does is basically it takes the range of tracks from hard left to 50% left to center 50% right and right. And finally, I can hit O and I to pan tracks left and right by 10%. For my track volumes, I have a fader, but if you don't have a MIDI controller, you can also use this command, track set volume for selected tracks, MIDI CC, OSC only. And I have set that to option control and mouse wheel, and that just moves the fader up and down. Let me show you a couple of cycle actions. I have command control option and F set to freezing a track, 
Now that command exists by default, but I use a cycle action for this instead because I always wanted an indication that a track is frozen. So I add this icon to it using a cycle action and I have command control option to freeze to mono, command control option and shift F to freeze to stereo. If you want to learn more about my cycle action, that is the third episode I did or fourth. I'll, I'll put the link up here. And speaking of stuff that I showed before, I really like this one. If I select a bunch of items, I can hit option and return. What that does is that it will show my mixer and it will only show those tracks. And then if I hit it again, I'll go back to normal. That again is covered in another video. So I'll put the link to that up there. Next up, like we said before, I got rid of command and T because I find it quite useless. So I can just double click to create a new track. And I have another one, command shift and N to insert multiple tracks. So if you just want to add 16 tracks, you don't need to double click 16 times. You can also give them a name and it'll give you 16 new tracks. I have some commands to create parents and child tracks because I really don't like this system. Them. And in fact, I wish you could turn it off. It's really not intuitive for me and I don't see that gray area. And I know you can change that, but I wish you could just move tracks without getting that option to make them parents. But let's say I want to take these four tracks and make them the children of this track. I can just hit control and nine and that will make that happen. And if I hit control and nine, it'll go away. The same thing here. I can again, make this a parent. And this time I have three things. So I can completely take them out of this child parent structure. I can just make them siblings of my track or I can make them children of my track. And then on any parent track, if I hit control and zero, that'll cycle through the collapse state. Another thing is if I select all these tracks, I can do command shift and D and that'll create a folder to put them all under and I can give it a name. So I can call this drum bus and that'll in one move, create a track, name it and make it the parent of your selected tracks. I also have F7 to set the tracks to a random color. Command, Control, and L to lock the track controls. If I want to duplicate any track, and I know it exists in right-click menus, but I don't like right-clicking, so I can do Command, Control, Option, and D to duplicate a track, including all its items, or I can just do Command, Option, and D, and that'll duplicate an empty version of a track. You know, you got a guitar, you really like the tone, you have a bunch of plugins on it, and you want to just duplicate that to do more takes on, you know, double it or whatever, and I can just hit it. It'll create a track with all the settings of the track you are on, except it will delete all its items. And that's a very simple custom action, duplicates the track, deletes all the items. Having all these different hotkeys allows me to make my track control panel much smaller and still have access to all those controls. Here's the list of all the actions we use. In the blog post, I will talk a little bit more about whatever I end up cutting out of this video. And that's it for today. Thanks for watching. And if you like the work I do, please donate to me through buymeacoffee.com. The link to that will be in the description. Thanks to all our previous donors. I really appreciate you supporting the channel. Take care of yourself and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.